and not, I swear, if there's one question about night vision on this show, I'm going to leave. I'm just going to walk out the door. Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Star Citizen Live, uh, your weekly uh, discussion of behind the scenes, uh, uh, Q&A, uh, sometimes where were you born and why did you get into video games questions. Uh, joining us on the show this week, we're just going to jump right into it this week, uh, 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 esteemed members of our FPS uh, improvements team, members of Team Nuck. Uh, we, st Knuck. We, we still haven't, Knuck. we still haven't name these, these teams. We're just going to jump into it uh, with the, some introductions because everybody knows who I am. Unfortunately, we don't need, I don't need to take up any more time. Zach! Zach! Hello. How are it's you doing? It's me. Oh, I'm good. I'm Spectrum's number one enemy here. Uh, <laughs> senior game designer, FPS man, the guns, AI, creatures, the whole shebang. That's me. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you. We, we, it's we, nice to be here. We were talking about you were actually supposed to be on a show once before. And we did, we did, you know, most people don't know that the, you, you wouldn't see it in the live show, but there's actually like this huge prep period before we go live. And we did like 40 minutes of prep and making sure going through things, blah, blah, blah. And then right, like just two, three minutes before the start of the show, Zach's internet went out and he disappeared. And he wasn't on the show <laughs> we were supposed to be on before. Uh, but you're That's here fantastic. now. It's working. I am here. It's all right. I'm back. Hello. Oh, oh, uh oh. Yeah. And you're wearing, oh, okay. you're wearing the shades that protect you from the YouTube comments? I am. I can't read Twitch chat with these on. They have um, awesome. comment blocking um, abilities. They're very handy. All right. Uh, Pascal, who are you and what do you do for Star Citizen? Hi. My name is Pascal. I'm a gameplay programmer in Frankfurt. And I'm yeah doing programmer stuff like coding and whatever that is. All right, what is a game Most people can't really... Yeah. No. What does a gameplay programmer do with regards to FPS? Like, are, are you the one determining left foot goes in front of right foot? What, what, what's a programmer? Uh, no, that's for more smarter people. I'm <laughs> the one that Zach screams at when he wants something in the game. <laughs> hey, can we do X? <laughs> and then I go, probably. <laughs> let, let me have a look and then I get around and eventually we get a task added for that. And so it's that classic, That's that classic relationship between designer and programmer. Can we do this? No. But can we do this? Maybe. You'll let me know? I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much that. Zach chimes in once or twice a day. Hey, by the way, I have a query. <laughs> can we... <laughs> Can we do this? And then it's, pretty, it's pretty much the Austin Powers thing where you've got to ask them three times and eventually yeah. they'll say yes. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is the, that, oh my God, that is the relationship between designer and programmer put perfectly, Nick. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Nick, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hello, yes, so I'm Nick. I'm a system designer three. So I'm on the core gameplay team, which is anything FPS related, uh, but we obviously focus on the features um, for, for FPS and Star Citizen. So uh, I work quite closely with Zach. We're kind of like the weapon buddies. So um, yeah, I work on et uh, entity setups. I work on some balancing. I've also just picked up keybinds and everything kind of FPS related. Um, that's kind of me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and last but certainly not least, uh, Atil. Uh, tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hello, uh, I am Atul. I'm also a gameplay programmer based in Frankfurt. Um, well, uh, lately I've been working on uh, reload improvements and I wore my favorite t-shirt today. That, what does it say? Honk? Exactly. <laughs> Is there an explanation Amazing. for that? Honk? Just honk? Honk. Honk. One more? Honk. Okay. It's a power move. <laughs> yeah, I have. To be fair, Atul is not German. Atul is from Turkey. It, 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 it is a power move. Let me, I, I do, mean let me do a little submission display for Atul. There you go. There. I submit to your power move. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's jump into the questions because we wasted enough time. Uh, if you've never seen Star Citizen live before, <laughs> lucky you. Um, 
This show is where we take questions from you, the Star Citizen community. Uh, we posted a thread up on Spectrum, which is the bespoke communication platform available on robertspaceindustries.com. We let you submit your questions, uh, vote up which ones that you want to see answered most. Then we let uh, Zach and, and Nick and Attil and Pascal jump in there, ignore your voting, and pick the questions they wanted to answer most, which is what we got here. We've thrown them up, we mix them around, uh, and we're just going to jump all around this list here and just jump right into it. Um, <laughs> Uh, right off the bat, uh, Sniper Glint. I'm going to start mm. with Sniper Glint. Uh, we, 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 we snuck that into the show. We, we didn't talk about it. We just, we just showcased it. We're like, I'm like, people are going to notice. People noticed. I've uh, seen a lot of just comments. Seen a lot of comments on, 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 on Spectrum and social media about, you know, Sniper Glint's bullshit. And blah, blah, blah. Oh, I used our one swear. Sorry, you don't have any. Um, talk to mm -hmm. us. Talk to us about Sniper Glint. Why is it there? How does it work? Who will see it? Uh, what? How does it? Uh, how does it play into FOV angles and everything? Uh, talk to me, all things sniper glint. Go. So sniper glint occurs when a sniper is in aim down sight and they are aiming at you at a specific angle. So imagine if um, we say that target A is sniper and target um, sorry sniper is here, uh, the target is here it won't matter necessarily what your angle is. It matters what the sniper's angle is. And we're primarily doing that based upon uh, the what you imagine FOV, the player, right? They have like a, a cone in front of them and that determines whether you can see the glint or not. And that glint angle is customizable. I previously said like 11.5. Again, we were spitballing. We were just trying things out. There's a, there's a minor glint and then there's a direct glint. So the minor glint is obviously uh, when you're in, let's say it's 10 degrees. Um, and that minor glint is visible for 7.5. But when they're directly on you, we shine that major glint. This is primarily done because of the how powerful snipers are in the persistent universe. And if you're injured at all and you're wearing a heavy helmet, they can just one tap you in the head. And the cost of death is very punishing. It's very high, along with obviously, you know, a sniper being a powerful weapon. We still want to enable the fantasy of it, but you've got to have that initial feedback for um you know you're about to get you know they're lining up a shot they're doing things and to obviously you know there's a lot of gameplay implications there with how that looks how that feels i've seen a lot of people talking about um a lot of suggestions and a lot of them were very post-fire oriented so we want some pre-fire orientated warning that this is going off and occurring and hey you know you should be careful uh, we're doing some other things as well with regards to snipers with uh, removing auto zeroing off um, high off all all, uh, all scopes and we're increasing the zeroing zeroing increments so you have to focus more on landing your shot yeah. and yeah so so some follow-ups on just the things you, uh, you said and then uh, uh, Nick and Atelier, I want you to jump in here so you mentioned customizable you mean you can customize it. We can customize it, not for the player. We can customize it. Yeah. So uh, each each scopes they may and you know different scopes may have different FOVs and things like that to allow a uh, customize. Uh, well, not customization, but differentiation between manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So some might have different uh, modifiers on different glint angles, yeah. and you can pick the one that is okay. Cool. This is yeah. how I'm going to play my sniper. And and then when you mention you know obviously death is punishing. It, it's punishing now because you know the, all the, the time it takes to get back into the fight and then like this. This gets more more punishing when you consider death of a spaceman and all those things that we've talked about is those things more of those facets come online uh, finding ways to help people stay alive in these situations becomes more important so sniper glint plays into that uh one of the questions in the chat was instantly how does this work at night there is oh nick do you want to jump on this one no 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 go for it mate go for it okay so uh this the the regardless of lighting conditions, the glint is there. And that is because of this, how powerful these weapons are and how these things are needed to be in to essentially say, hey, you know, there is this incredibly powerful weapon aiming on you. You have time to react if necessary. They have to line up their shot on you and so on and so forth. So it is visible during the night. I'm aware that is uh, controversial. Yeah. And we, if anyone has any good alternatives they'd like to suggest, please give feedback. Yeah. We're more than open to hear it but this is a very gameplay oriented, yeah. orientated thing. Uh, uh, yeah, Zach, Zach and I, we had a play test uh, the other day with our lead Torsten, other Torsten, not Nuck Layman. And um, it, I think play, I really want players just to have a go with it because I think it's really 
Um, it really adds to gameplay, especially when we want to make snipers really like really powerful. Especially these like 50 cal snipers, like the PSXR. We really want them to be beneficial and really reward that gameplay. But at the same time, it needs some sort of balance. It needs some sort of counter to that. So I think, especially with the angles that Zach mentioned, um, I think at first, I think it's a bit like, oh, I'm not sure. But once you give it a go, I think like the crosshair we found at first, when we were talking about the crosshair, we were like, how are we going to implement it? And then after a while, after you've been using it, you're like, actually, this feels great. And we can't imagine not using it now. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the key thing is when you look at people, especially in places like Jump Town, where there's a lot of, um, you know, it's it's very dark, it's very hard to see things, and you have a sniper. And at the moment, currently, we don't obviously have the most fantastic uh, feedback for post shot for the snipers. For example, we don't have the really obvious traitors. We don't have the really obvious mu uh, muzzle flash and the audio doesn't go far enough and things like that. So we are aware of those things. Yeah but it's very hard to see the sniper at jump town and it just leads to this kind of degenerate play style where it's like <laughs> someone is not in someone is not engaging with jump town right they're there to just sit and be a sniper they're not necessarily say you know they're not contesting jump town they're not doing it for their team and there's a couple of examples of this and you know it's 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 healthy for the game yeah so uh, uh cig says snipers are degenerate gameplay send your letters to zach <laughs> yeah, I, I one more thing I will add uh, on this as well. Uh, I've seen some comparisons to yeah. you know the games and looking at glint and stuff. Our glint is a lot smaller. Our glint is a lot less obvious. And obviously, we only showed one distance, but you'll see that yes. the glint is not like you know the light of God itself is yeah. looking at you. No, people have seen one and a half seconds of it, and in one situation, and the, the, the imagination's going wild with it. Like all things, try it, test it, feedback, try it, test it, feedback, we change, try it, test it, feedback, we change. It, 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 we, it, it'll be dialed in like anything else. And if you didn't get the thing about the Jadena thing, joking. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking at Zach's expense because of the word he used. Um, <laughs> I will say, uh, 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 there's, there's someone in the chat named Kakashi. Kakashi said, as soon as you add sniper glint, everyone will play quick, snoping, quick scoping snipers that run and parkour around. Uh, uh, do you wow. agree with that? Do you, yeah, do you disagree no, with that? No, because we're increasing sniper ADS time as well. So snipers will have a longer ADS time because uh, if you've played them against them in close quarters at the moment, they're very oppressive. So they're also going to have like bigger hip fire and things like that. So, But they're also going to have much more higher damaging profiles than they currently have. Like the fall off on them is very strong and things like that. So leaning into the like the power fantasy elements of the sniper while making sure that hey i'm playing star and i don't expect to die to some guy who's running around with a sniper rifle because you know that i yeah. i you know that that's not the fps experience yeah. that you know we really feel yeah. and you don't need ads if you're no scoping so it's it's all if you're trying to quick scope there's where the ads is if you're not if you're just no scoping it doesn't affect you and the glint we will be adjusted no scoping as well a little bit like we we with the whole recoil thing that we added with this FPS improvements, the snipers got their recoil pass as well, I think. Um, obviously, this is still a work in progress, but spray and recoil no scope can be different from spray and recoil in ADS. So when you're not ADSing, no scoping can be adjusted by increasing spread or increasing the recoil there to make it harder to hit. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we we typically don't have spread on uh, our weapons when you ADS. So there's yeah. there's very few exceptions, but yeah. yeah. I, I think the moral in all of this is simply try it, keep trying it, give us feedback, keep giving us feedback. These guys keep reading the feedback. We talked to the player experience team and such uh, last week and stuff. It, it's, it's a cycle. It's a cycle of this. The only thing that doesn't help is doom and gloom. Try it, feedback, process the feedback, make changes over and over again until we get to some place where we find consensus. It's never going to make everybody happy. Nothing's ever going to make everybody happy, but it's about finding consensus, and we'll find the consensus. Let's jump into more of these questions because we're, we're already one-fourth of the way through the show and we've done one question. Do any of these changes to scopes fix the issue of armor clipping into the sights, or is that simply an armor issue? We are investigating this. It is sadly an armor issue when we go into ads then our armor clips in due to animation because we're not bringing the weapon to our eyes 
we're looking into that and we're planning on releasing for 323 a temporary fix for this it's not final yet we're looking into other options to make it a permanent good solution because the current solution has a few yeah um not so pretty things about or a few issues in the future there will be the perfect no clipping hopefully i will look into that later down yeah I th um, so I'm pretty it's, sure. I'm I pretty will, sure there, I, there are clipping occasions, even when they were not wearing armor, though. Yes, yes. but yeah. I what what we've done is we've basically taken uh, what we call like the, the the near near eye render or something. I'm not a, you know I'm not a graphics programmer, but essentially near imagine plane. yeah near plane. So imagine if like this is the end of your gun, right? We can basically clip the end of this gun off, and you only see the uh, clipping at the end of the gun off if you're in high AD uh, high FOV and while you're going out. But the level of improvement this has is incredibly drastic. So right now uh, we're really struggling to have it block views on sniper rifles, for example, or assault rifles over times four. The improvement is monumental. And uh, the patch after 323, we're, we've hopefully got something that is, um, you know, a lot nicer and a lot smoother than that, obviously TBD. Okay. Um... Are there plans for more grenade types? Yes, we have been, or we have a lot of grenade types already prototyped some of them um, or implemented some of them for squadron. The basic FPS types or FPS grenade types that you know, smokes, flashes and whatnot. And from there on, we're gonna move on to the more sci-fi things and other FPS devices as well. Uh, Don, uh, uh, Nick, ahead. do you want to give some of, some of the examples that we've kind of uh, that we've been cooking up and we can talk about? Do you mean sci uh, the sci-fi ones, or do you mean just the standard? I'd say the the more standard contemporary ones. Yeah, so obviously we've got like um, we've got the flash done and and frag, uh, obviously like uh, Pascal mentioned, but uh, the flash grenades um, or even the stun grenade, concussion grenade, we kind of playing around with different ideas of how exactly we want to do it for squadron, obviously with PVP as well. There's uh, kind of, you've got to be careful with balancing and stuff like that. But we, we have played around with the idea of the angles of, of where it goes off. So obviously if your flash goes off directly in front of your face, how long that would have that effect on the screen, whereas opposed to if it just happens to the, in your peripheral vision to your right hand side, um, how long that would have an effect and then after effects and we're obviously working with that we've got a really great health system like the bdl system in our game and we looked at some of the effects that we could have produced on the eyes of the after effects of being stunned and how that all plays into it as well and and again like smoke grenade um again it's so different between uh pve and pvp how long does the smoke last for performance wise so we're obviously looking into all the different factors of what happens bringing something from a single player experience into a multiplayer experience but um they're not gonna you know re uh what's the word reinvent the wheel necessarily they're going to be kind of what you expect for those classic items but then like like pascal mentioned we are going to start introducing some more sci-fi elements things i think like think like area of denial kind of uh, types of devices as well so oh. yeah uh don Steeler gaming in the chat asked will grenades have glint <laughs> <laughs> they will make a light the flashbang especially but <laughs> it's like not a big sure glint. if you count this as glint <laughs> If you look really close into the scope, it might flash bang you. But <laughs> uh, all right, uh, you mentioned that the, the health system. The, health, uh, the next question we got here: um, uh, Does CIG have any plans to replace things like percentage of health with more immersive vitals, things like blood pressure and heart rate, so players might feel more immersed in the experience of Star Citizen? So uh, in terms of the overall health meter, that's the current goal at this time. But we are uh, doing some things related around medical gameplay at the moment. For example, with injuries, uh, we're doing a current balance pass to make them more of kind of like, you know, a story of combat that you've been through. At the moment, they're a bit too heavily RNG reliant than I like. You can sometimes enter a bunker and walk out with, you know, the worst injuries and sometimes uh, walk out with like none at all. It's not really the, you know, you look at your character. It's not really the story of your character that's going through. Uh, but there's also some things we're uh, working on to kind of add to medical gameplay. So a big thing we've been talking about is the uh, pre-down state where, you know, we want to 
move away from reviving people with, uh, you know, the general med pens and have specific pens to uh, revive people with. Um, so, you know, the, the pre-down state is also very handy because it's, it, imagine if like as soon as your health hits zero, you can essentially, you know, focus on crawling into a safer space to be able to be revived at the moment. Because if someone goes down, the majority of the time, people are just tractor beaming people, you know, their corpses right. into cover. And it's, it, it obviously, it looks a bit wacky. So the pre-down state is quite nice. Um, and, you know, increasing the BDL costs for, you know, uh, being revived and getting back up and things like that. Um, the pre-down will be a very limited window of time as well. So it's not like you see people crawling on the ground for like, you know, uh, two minutes sort of thing. Right. And there's a, uh, uh, we'll talk about it in a couple of weeks on ISC, but there's a, there's a new help app being added to Moby Glass in 323 that'll give you a more detailed uh, uh, stuff like that. It's still being developed past 323, but you'll see more health-related information and stuff being made available uh, to players, which might help with that sense of immersion there. Um, oh, that's a question about night vision. I'm skipping that. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to ammo repooling, are you defining different types of ammo ac across different weapons? Rifle, pistol, sniper, shotgun, etc. Or will ammo pools be bespoke to each weapon magazine? Um, I can chime in. So it will be bespoke to each uh, weapon's ammo. So, for example, when you're repooling a P4 ammunition, the other... Uh, um, the ammunition that belongs to other weapons will not be touched. So it's for that weapon only. Um, a, a couple of things to add here is like right now in the current iteration, you will be able to repool um, only if you actually have that weapon either in your hand or, uh, or in your back. So you saw the Ramage animation uh, in the ISC. So you have the weapon in your uh, hand. Um, so if you have it in your back, you will automatically un uh, unholster it. Um, and if you don't have that weapon, you won't be able to uh, report. Um, and so that's the situation, the current iteration. We'll see what we, where we go from there. So um, please uh, give us your feedback. Then you get your hands on it. Um, one more point, actually, something that we didn't show in ISC, but will be included in 323, uh, is that you will be able to trigger repooling. Um, in the inventory UI, when you right click to a magazine, you see the uh, context menu. Uh, you will see the... Um, uh, repull option there, and when you click that, um, the repull, uh, the sorry, inventory UI will uh, close, and then it will trigger the uh, regular ramage animation. And then similar to, uh, goes with loot UI as well. Like when you're in the loot UI, and then when you hover over the weapon and press a hotkey, uh, in the same way, it will trigger repulling. So you will be able to uh, trigger um, from the menus as well. Yeah. Um there's a question here as, as a follow-up to this, um, asking, uh, saying that uh, all the examples of mag repooling that we were able to show in ISC were ballistic ammo, mm -hmm. uh, and asking whether that uh, uh, works on uh, laser stuff. Before you get to the answer, I, I want to take the opportunity to comment a little bit about why you see certain things in ISC and why you don't. Um, the guys... Uh, who I'm going to shout out here because they, they, they deserve it every week, Will, Dave, and Alex, who make all the footage for ISC each and every week. They work in a, in a world. If you consider Alpha that you, guys get, that you guys play, and it works this well from time to time, it's still, it's still a, a pre-release build. It, it, th things work and has this level buggy. And then underneath that, there's PTU, which has, which where fewer things work and there are more bugs, whatever. Then there's Evocati, where even fewer things work and there are even more bugs and we generally NDA it and stuff like that. They work even before that. <laughs> so the place where they work, uh, uh, it, it, every frustration you ever have gets visited on them about 20 times each and every week. And yet they persevere and they make some of the best damn stuff. I mean, ISC is, ISC is better today than it's been at any time in its history. And that's because mm -hmm. of Will, Dave, and Alex uh, and the struggles that they're going through. They're currently struggling right now with the new cargo stuff and the new hangar stuff right now. Like literally this minute, they're in there doing that right now because it's so early. Um, so we don't always get to show every single aspect that you might expect because we're working so early in the pipeline. Uh, so with that said, we weren't able to show laser uh, repooling, uh, but you can repool laser stuff. How does that work? Yes, yes. Um, it's actually going to work the same way. So um, in the current iteration, they're all max, they're all subject to repooling, uh, except for tools. Uh, so multi-tool and dedicated salvage tool at this point in time. Uh, so 
uh, all are the same. Um, we have the mid-term to long-term idea that, that to toy with, uh, which is like, which rolls around differentiating energy weapons from ballistic weapons by giving uh, energy weapons some automatic ammo regeneration. That's kind of similar to energy weapons, but that's for the future. Uh, so yeah, uh, for the for the time being, they will all the same. Yeah, I will. I'll just add. Uh, you right, Jared. I think they did a fantastic job because um, we'd shot our bits earlier on, and then we had a chat with them, and they were just amazing at being able to capture what we were kind of talking about. Because I felt like I was waffling on. And I was like, they got exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically, obviously, for right now, for three twenty three, obviously, it's just it's much more easier for balancing and stuff to make sure that both ammo types will uh, repool. Uh, but as Attil mentioned, yeah, we are talking about obviously when um, armor suits get the resource network, potentially uh, we're looking into the idea of uh, the ammo suits being able to trickle charge because at the end of the day, uh, the energy weapons are using batteries, right? So mm -hmm. they don't have a physical capacity. And so um, the right. idea is that they might be able to slowly charge up. Uh, so there's obviously pros and cons to both. And that's how we are going to eventually differentiate between ballistic, you know, ballistic may do, uh, more damage, heavy hitting, but obviously it's limited by its capacity, right? And it can, uh, you need to obviously uh, reload and run out of bullets and repool, whereas laser, for example, doesn't have a drop off, so it can travel much further. Uh, but then obviously we've got to think about overheating and we've got to think about um, if it does overheat, but it also can just then recharge. You don't need to worry about running out of ammo per se. So um, yeah, that's kind of how currently right now it's the same, but eventually we are looking at the ways we can differentiate the two different ammo types. Do do the uh, do the other FPS items that we were talking about, like the the, the multi tool and anything? Are there thoughts about giving them batteries and stuff as well at some point? Uh, the uh, the Grin multi tool. Yeah. What was that sorry? Or just, just, yeah, just yeah, any so of these other things that were that aren't strictly FPS weapons, but they're obviously energy based. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we're open to ideas of everything that can be. Um, uh, yeah, battery wise absolutely it could be charged up yeah just a, a chat right now is imagining uh, I, I think uh, 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 Vlaz said something about you know bringing a car battery to replenish weapons just just somebody running around with a giant battery <laughs> plug in um, okay. we're open to ideas <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be an interesting you know position on the combat field <laughs> just, just the guy with all the recharge cables um, it could be a profession you know Will, uh, while we're talking about uh, uh, reloading, repooling stuff, uh, will there be some way to either cancel or completely prevent reloading since it's getting updated? Uh, reloading? Yes. Breaking out. Yes. yes. Uh, so the answer is yes, you will be able to cancel reloading and repooling process um, by uh, probably sprinting and jumping. So like, there's a, like a list of actions which uh, we can uh, cancel repooling with, or uh, we cannot do while repooling. So uh, we already have the system, but I don't have the like a full list of actions in mind right now. But you will certainly be able to uh, cancel that rummage animation. Can you cancel other people reloading? If you kill them, <laughs> death is the ultimate cancel. That's a bit of a or cheap knock them track. over, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I'm looking for. Can you knock them over and it cancels their reload? Well, yeah, force reactions will uh, throw yeah. you out, yeah. If someone throws a grenade and you go fry, uh, frying flying, you're not going to be able to rummage through your backpack. And, and, and if, some, if somebody's in the middle of reloading and I can, I can unarmed combat, you know, punch them, will that interrupt maybe? It depends on how hard you punch them. Well, you knock them out, yeah. Well, except I, I want a full-on WWE clothesline, but Steve Bender <laughs> keeps shining me on. But I, just think about it. WWE clothesline. Uh, yeah, but uh, Zach and I obviously spent a lot of time looking at, like, we've called it like an actions matrix, basically. And we've basically looked at everything, jumping, crouching, proning, uh, what actions are you doing whilst you're doing that, you know, so um, we're definitely working through it. It's a big list. Because yeah. if you try and think of every single action you're doing, and then it's like, do I reload, do I want to heal, do I want to holster? Um, so it's a big list to get through, but uh, we're working with obviously engineers to basically decide exactly kind of the game that we want to make and where we want to give freedom to the player and then what actions are more punishable like if you've committed to that then you've got to finish the animation and so forth mm -hmm. uh, yeah for example like something uh, with the action matrix work that we talk about uh, an example could be like if you med pen right uh, obviously it's very quick now um 
but if you if you know we were to make that med pen process longer in the future uh you might not be able to sprint out of that you have to commit to it sort of thing so on the design side we can kind of pick and choose where that goes it goes a long way to making the game feel less clunky when you have more like autonomy and control over your character and the movement and the feel of that is you know it's it's very important it's where the it's where the word clunk comes from right it's, it's an indescribable feeling of like oh this feels janky this feels clunky typically comes from like uh, actions not working as you'd expect uh that, that's great we're gonna stay on the repooling I, I got caught uh rakuna nangrata in chat says zach is really unprofessional <laughs> how do you feel about that zach? yeah <laughs> yes that is, that is my roots uh i will say you know i'm from a working class background in england so everyone everyone you see in the game industry is you know usually a bit more polished and nicer but I, I, not I everyone same attitude. look uh, not, not, nobody not looks everyone, at me no. and says that guy's professional <laughs> doing if you this want to talk about professional you should see his desk at work it's horrific oh, don't, it's terrible it's, it's got warhammer figures it's got uh it's got magic the gathering decks Yu Gi Oh decks <laughs> there's some Heinz barbecue sauce on here. Some leftover there's, cake, cans. There's, there's a shotgun. Um, there's Cheetos that Todd Pappy gave me. Anything yeah. with anyone with OCD, like me, I just can't sit next to him, but I'm for, fortunately I'm forced next to him. No, no. We have My the desk most is super clean. Beautiful dichotomy, like, because we yeah. sit right next to each other, and I've got, like, just this minefield, and Nick has this lovely, like, diorama of figures and so on and so forth. Yeah, I've got to get, got to bring all the cool stuff. Oh, it's not a focus. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly Necrons on here, though. Ugh. <laughs> Go, Tau for life. Um, all right. Tau. <laughs> tau. Tau is wow, really that's, uncommon. That's rogue. Jared, you yeah. do seem like a Tau guy. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't, like I don't think guy, yeah, I, I think. like robots. Tau, tau I like doesn't robots. fit into the aesthetic of 40k job. I, that's yeah, why I like it. it. They, they stick out like a sore <laughs> thumb. It's like it's like Apple showed up and was just like, "Hey, Warhammer, we're here." Um, I just I like really how upsetting it makes everybody <laughs> else. So, um, to go. all right, back to reloading. A uh, uh, question from the chat: uh, No X uh, 4085 uh, asks if there's been any thought about large weapons that may actually need a friend to reload. Yeah, I mean, uh, who hasn't played Helldivers at the minute? <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, not, not, on our, not on our radar at the minute. Um, but, you know, that's what we have ships for, right? The, the, good, team, the good team gameplay. But yeah, not, not on our radar. No, nothing's coming on for now. Okay. Uh, can we also pull magazines from our backpacks and equip them to the suit item ports instead of reloading my currently held weapon so that I can stock up my suit item ports? Uh, in the current situation, no. So re repulling process will reload your weapon. However, to quickly stock up your uh, suit item ports, you can just um, open up loot UI and then with a, with a single like a, a mouse click, you can like uh, move your uh, backpack max to your suit very easy it's going to take a second so it, it can be done easily uh, but not automatically okay um so let's move on we got we got some stuff for dynamic crosshair here so dynamic crosshair is one another one of the the new features that are coming online with alpha 323 this uh, you know basically you know, depending on the the type of combat helmet that you wear uh some will be able to provide you you know a little virtual cursor that aligns with where your uh, a gun is going. I mean, I first saw this feature in, I think, Blue Thunder back in 1982 is where I first saw it. So, you know, it, it's, I was like, when it, when it showed up here, I was like, oh, it's Blue Thunder. Um, I'm sure some people have better references than that, but I'm old and dumb. That's mine. Um, this question says, will we have any reason to use laser attachments on our weapons with the new Dynamic Crosshair? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So go oh, ahead, Bill. You take this. Oh, 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 me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, obviously, there's other weapons which you might not want to wear a combat helmet or other situations where you might not want to wear a combat helmet. Like, we have these environmental suits, and in these scenarios, you might want to wear a weapon or a tool and equip a laser pointer to it to know where you're aiming at. Or you have further down the line with different armor types, different armors equipped like a medical helmet or whatever. Not sure what, what what's the design mm -hmm. for, for 
all of these armor types. Nick can go into detail about this. But there are definitely situations in our game, and we will create even more situations along the line where the laser pointer will still be necessary or useful. Yeah, I, th I think the, like I said in the ISC, um, this is kind of like the start of our branching off into the archetypes for armors. So as Pascal mentioned, you know, we do have different Ooh. ideas. Uh, we're still playing with ideas. Nothing's concrete right now, but we're playing with ideas. And, and Rich talked about this in 2019 at Citizen Con on stage about, you know, like, for example, a medic gameplay, what would that visor look like? Would they see the vital signs of their teammates, for example? Or if you're a minor, you know, if you're, if, so if, for example, you're just wearing a combat helmet and you do a scan, maybe it'll just tell you the type of rock it is. But if you're wearing a mining helmet, maybe the visor will give you extra details, like the clarity of the material or um, how efficient the rock is will be to break down and stuff like that. So... Or even like, say, for example, like a specialist, like if you're pinging as a specialist as a bounty hunter, maybe you get to ping further and get a little bit more of a head start on who you're trying to track. So, um, for example, I don't think we touched on this in the ISC, but we also looked at like the HUD, for example, um, with backpack reloading, like with the combat helmets, obviously it gives you the information of the magazines on your suit and the backpack. We may actually lose that information when you use, say, for example, the environment suit. So to answer your question, I think, the laser sight, laser sight still has a very viable path because if you are doing a profession, let's say you want to be a miner or you want to be salvaging or whatever, obviously we're in a PVP environment. Right. You just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, it's, if you still want that, that freedom of, of knowing where your barrel is exactly pointing, you're getting jumped by an enemy uh, team or whoever, um, then it's, it still has that choice when you're outside of a combat a helmet scenario or you've simply just given yourself a brand new bouffant hair in the character customizer and like i'm not putting a helmet oh, on exactly this. laser sight. exactly right <laughs> laser sight show off so all, i could show show off all that hard work right you're not going to put 50 hours in the character customizer for a helmet right so it's all about choices um all right uh will shooting specific gear destroy the item or, for example, in the case of grenades, make them explode in the future. So, um, again, we've spent a lot of time kind of working out exactly how we want damage to apply. Obviously, uh, a few years ago, I wrote the design for uh, wear and um, dirt and everything that comes with it and overheating. And we've kind of implemented that in Squadron and with obviously thinking with the PU in mind as well. Um, we, we really are keep quite keen on the idea of an explosion happening uh, to the specific area that you've been hit. So, for example, if a grenade does go off right by your weapon, then the level of wear and the damage applied to that weapon will skyrocket, obviously, uh, as it's gone off right next to it. And the same could be applied for dirt. So, for example, uh, if you're walk, let's say you're in a swampy environment and you walk through, if you then sprint through the amount of dirt that's then applied to that specific area, like your legs, for example, that will then skyrocket through. Same as if you were crawling through the mud, your level of dirt will cake your whole armor in, in mud. And the same for obviously uh, damage on items as well. So um, yes, it will damage certain items, uh, but we are still obviously playing around with um, how much of a factor that will play into right. the overall. And uh... yeah. Oh, do you have some? I, okay. Uh, and with things like uh, dynamic crosshair, uh, specifically, just well, before we completely move on for this, uh, there's a question in here about will, will players have the option to modify the dynamic crosshair, e either in size, shape, color, whatever. For the, or since I see we actually did a few adjustments already to the crosshair, and we're now looking for adding maybe an op opacity slider or something like that. So you can at least say, oh, I don't want it fully visible or just half visible so it doesn't really obscure my vision. And later down the line, let's see what the future brings, right? Um, if we find the time, I would like to do it, but maybe we have other things that need more <laughs> fixing or more, more help from our side, so. Yeah, it's always a matter of priorities. It's it's exactly. it's, not, it's not that we don't want to do it. It's just that sometimes there are other things that are deemed more important or pressing at any given moment. And then those priorities change, which is why sometimes, you know, 
we, we can say that this thing is next and then it ends up not being next and whatnot, the priorities change. When you say that you're, you've begun working since ISC on the El Paso stuff, that's not, that's, those are expo technical explorations and stuff and that's not you saying these are guaranteed to be in 323. I'm, um, let's see what the future <laughs> brings. That's what I'm saying, but, okay. uh, <laughs> I just wanna be clear, it, it, it's, it, you know, we just started looking into this again, yeah. it doesn't mean, and that's one of those things where, me. You know, it's one. It's one of those things. It's. It's. You know, we, all of this season here. You know, since since we came back, we've been talking about all these tremendous things that are on the roadmap for three twenty three. All these things that are being targeted for three twenty three. There is still a go no go process. And and if if it comes to the point where you know, does dynamic crosshair go in? Well, we don't have the opacity slider. We're not gonna. That's not the thing that's gonna stop it from being a go. So it's it's yeah. there's always these choices that that that, that kind of have. So it's definitely something we're exploring. It's definitely something we want to work at. There's just no guarantee that 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 slide that opacity slider you just mentioned will be a 323 thing. Just something down the line we're looking into. Uh, I just want to be real clear. Set expectations. Uh, dynamic crosshair though, I think we're, we're that works. That's working really nice. Our guys had a lot of fun with it when they were doing the uh, uh, stuff for uh, ISC and. Uh, I don't think we have to worry about that not being a 323. Yeah, uh, it's really amazing. Like when I first implemented this, yeah, I, obviously I, I liked it. But nowadays, every time I don't have a comm advisor on, I feel kind of something's missing. And I yeah. I really enjoy it. I, I hope you, you guys will enjoy it too. Yeah. It's, it's a really great thing. Yeah. Uh, sea Turtle Man in the chat says, what the hell is a... Uh, what the hell is a go no go? Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but it's a good question that I think deserves to be reiterated every once in a while. Uh, we develop all of these features in silos. This team working on this, and 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 those all come with their own struggles. They're all their own bugs. Their own their own things that oh, we tried to get this to work and we just never found it, or we got it to work and then we found out it wasn't fun, so we want to do it differently and stuff like this. Then when you start to combine them all in a bigger patch, you find a whole new series of bugs, of different interactions of, oh, this worked great on its own and this worked great on its own, but when you put it together, uh, we got two piles of butt. So we, got, we need to do more work and more adjustment stuff. And that's where the go, no go process goes. It allows us to look at these things and determine whether they're ready for prime time, whether they should go into the patch or whether they should not go into patch. Very few things generally fail a no go a go no go we talked i think the last one we talked about was the the last Xi'an ship that was supposed to be on a patch and it was like no no it, it failed a go no go the whole we, nobody liked the cockpit it wasn't a good experience and then they, they held it back and stuff there's a couple other examples like that but for the most part that's what the go no go is it's how we prevent things from how we attempt to prevent things from causing more trouble than they're worth do we always succeed no but having the process and trying is better than not having the process at all. So that's what a go-no-go no go is, and that process happens much closer to the uh, release of the patch. Sometimes they're really beneficial as well because you'll get a, a point of view from someone, you know, a complete different department, like you mentioned, that has brought something up and you thought, actually, that's a really good point. Yeah. And then it leads you on down another path. So it's very, very important that we do these. Uh, and then you'll get the other end of that where, for example, uh, where we talked about optic zoom, which was on uh, the inner side of sites, but then we had issues with upscaling. So uh, we've had to take out the inner optic zoom on the optics, uh, which was shown off at CisenCon because it just doesn't work with upscaling. So it's like, you know, yeah. like Jarrell was saying, when you work on a bunch of different stuff and all of a sudden it comes together, you're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> And as for uh, uh, Shizor, I'm saying it says, wait, where does the go, no, go, no, go? Uh, right to my ulcer. All right. Quickly to adding on that inner Zoom thing that Zach mentioned, we're still trying to, to get this back in because we like the look of it, right? And the graphics guys are currently looking into solutions to that problem to give you that Zoom effect on that actual scope for now, for 323 it's probably not going to happen let's see what they can come up with okay um oh, i like this question uh we've talked about like we've been talking about different fps gadgets and and, and things since the yay old days of star marine when it was being developed by ilphonic back in 2015. Uh, uh, is there a possibility we could see ballistic shields in the future maybe as shipboarding becomes more important 
yes, there is a possibility. I actually worked on the ballistic shield. We have it for Squadron. We are not sure when we bring this to the PU, but it's there. And let's see when this will spill over. Seriously, a ballistic shield? Yes. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you as well, it's not as straightforward as it sounds, because obviously in our universe... Don't take this away from me, Nick. It, <laughs> it's... Yeah. Um, yeah, I really hope we can get it into the PU soon, because um, it's very cool. But let me just tell you, it was tough. Um, yeah, it was tough to get in the the technical difficulties behind that, getting it working like we intended to work. But now we, we got it somewhat. And yeah, let's see when it spills over. Well, it will be great. Yeah. Well, I think we, me and you, Pascal, will push for it in, shall we? Well, yeah, see what we can do. Well, I'm just saying, let's see. I'm just saying Johnny Jasivius, JJ himself, plays in one of my D&D campaigns and he's an orc who double wields shields and just runs around <laughs> with two shields, bashing people and stuff. So um, if, if, you, if you need someone to sign off, talk to JJ. Just tell him I sent you. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, in ISC, when zooming in with the scopes, the whole screen outside of the scope zoomed in as well. I do understand a lot of things shown in ISC are work in progress, hey, hey. Uh, but not quite finished yet. Will this be correct? But will this be corrected so that only the image inside the scope is zoomed in? So this is a technical limitation, uh, basically. Um, so a lot of games, what they do is they have a separate render layer for the weapons, which is obviously why we go to when you go to a corner or something, you know, holding a gun out, we do that because the gun would clip through otherwise. So it is a technical limitation currently, but we are working on alleviating that. We've seen a lot of feedback. In regards to like, hey, you know, if you blur the outside, it's more it's more believable to me. So it's something we are working on. So the outside of the scopes will be blurred to, you know, kind of trick your brain almost to not see behind the curtain. But yeah, we we do something called the universal rig where it's, um, you know, first person is equivalent to third person. So, you know, what you get is what you see. And obviously that has some drawbacks. So in the instance, you know, how we render things, how uh, the universal rig is set up and so on and so forth. Um, next question, uh, 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 sniper scope glint is my absolute favorite thing in every video game I've ever played. I can't wait until it's added into alpha 323. Can I also hope to obtain, equip and use advanced binoculars for scouting purposes, of course, also with a glint. <laughs> so uh, binoculars is something that has come up a lot in discussions recently and it's one of those things that um, it's on the list of gadgets so it's one of those things where it's like we said hey you know people really want this they feel very strongly about this so binoculars are on the list of gadgets it's not in the immediate future but it is on the list for development okay um, we can get some more of these more, more of these in here um, what ammo variants have you been looking at, if any? Uh, example, examples they give here are Tracer, Incendiary, etc. Yeah, I can take this. Um, so obviously we've kind of, uh, for Star Citizen right now, we've kind of covered a lot of, we're quite, quite happy with the, the, what we've covered so far. So we have some nice uh, burst weapons and we have obviously some powerful uh, snipers and whatnot, but we have obviously uh, with with energy kind of treat it as like an umbrella term for that ammo type so under that umbrella we have lots of plans so obviously um the players will have seen laser but we also have plasma which is like obviously on the carna um so currently um Attil's done some really good work with uh, damage over time with plasma so that burning effect of once you've been hit maybe a certain few seconds after that you've got that sizzling burning effect that you've been hit by plasma we also want plasma to be different than laser in terms of like how volatile it is maybe it overheats a lot faster um so just certain different uh, factors like that but then obviously with obviously discussing all the time we're throwing ideas around um we've talked a lot about tachyon like the idea that faster than light ammo uh, but obviously we with balancing we don't want it to be necessarily hit scan because uh, that can cause a whole lot of issues uh, but then we've talked about neutron uh, what does that mean for fps you know does it become more powerful the further it travels and then obviously at citizen Con we showed the vault weapons so um we are a really exciting opportunity right now because we kind of feel like we've covered 
a lot of the standard FPS, what you'd expect. And now this is kind of where we can really branch off and be a bit more sci-fi and really introduce some really unique mechanics and that can really differentiate gameplay and really make each energy type really stand out from one another and really create that difference. So um, yeah, some exciting things hopefully on the way soon. Yeah. It's going to get sci-fi up in here, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Wonka the Sane yeah. in the chat says, Tachyon weapons would hit before you fired them. Would probably help Captain uh, Burks. Yeah, fast and light, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't know why I picked on Burks. He's just the name that pops up. Um, will, ooh, this one, this, this is an oldie, but a, but a goodie. Uh, will it be possible to equip weapons with civilian clothes? uh yeah uh hopefully <laughs> it's something we're currently working on i don't want to definitely say yes or no uh, it's something we're definitely interested in i actually had a meeting uh last week with um tech uh, tech Adams and character art about the possibility of what we do because obviously um as most players will know that we spend a majority of time in armor and we really want to utilize our clothing sets so uh, it's definitely something we're interested in, and it's something we're trying to figure out how we would go about it. Yeah, and 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 to to, to clarify this, it, there are some weapons you can use with civilian clothes. It's, we're just we're talking about the ability to stow them and and and, yes, and stuff like and that. Being able to holster on your back. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of it is obviously you know we have such a high attention to detail, so we don't want clipping. We don't want it to uh, just completely break the asset essentially. So. And obviously we have a lot of legacy clothing and we're also introducing like a new clothing style and and it's just basically kind of um, working with different departments to see, okay, what is absolute no-go? What is what works? Like, you know, different ideas. Would it have necessarily like a magnetic plate would attach? Would it attach like via a holster? All these different ideas are being thrown around because um, it is something that we are quite passionate about getting into the PU, so... Yeah, Hopefully. yeah. Even if it's yeah, that, that, like an equipable holster, just something you can you can add to your you know your 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 pants or your trousers that gives you a the hard point to stow the the gun would yeah, be cool. Exactly. Yeah. Um, is the plan? We haven't talked a lot about recoil. Let's find a recoil one. <laughs> is the plan to make weapons generally follow recoil patterns like the three two two one? Uh, like the three two two one C fifty four, lots of recoil, but no, but lower no bloom. Uh, this would be cool. That part's not a question. That's just a statement. <laughs> so, uh, in regards to this, uh, the, there's kind of been some confusion because obviously we shipped a lot of procedural recoil in three twenty two. So there are some improvements coming to uh, the recoil system in general. So, for example, with uh, well, let me, let me answer the initial question first. So uh, each weapon does have a recoil pattern. There are minor amounts of uh, variation on the recoil pattern, as you know, it help you know you know on the weapon feeling uh, the same every single time you fire. Um, but each each weapon does have a unique recoil pattern. So you imagine something where well, a sarcastic arms weapon is more unwieldy. There's a bit more noise. It's more horizontal. Or something bearing is more. Uh, traditional, you know, uh, ver very vertical with, uh, you know, less uh, firepower than um, cast like arms. So uh, what we've done for 323 is we've uh, refined these recoil pans and made them, uh, well, general like visual recoil and actual recoil is uh, a bit smoother than previously in 322, not to any kind of noticeable from a, you know, very noticeable, you know, you're not going to get very, you know, static and boring weapons, but it's in the sense of helping at firing at range. Because if you try to use things like the the bearing at like, a, you know, 40, 50 meter um, engagement ranges, you can typically struggle. And it's, it's not the gameplay we want with the scope and the expanse of our world. So it's you know it's it, it will help you basically take these fights um other things as well uh, just off the cuff like uh, looking at magazine sizes especially damage uh profiles in, in regards to uh damage fall off uh, projectile speeds so overall making the kind of uh on the ground pu you're contesting jump town you're contesting ghost hollow far more viable with an assault rifle as it should be right. um yeah it was we 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 we, we uh, struggled with that in the in the edit because some of the recoil changes have already been out there in three twenty two and some weren't and, and making sure that that got communicated but still demonstrated. Um, Stratholm, Stratholm, 
that looks like it's in, in the chat, uh, has a simple question. Uh, slide mechanic. Slide? Yeah, we, they talked about slide at a Citizen Con, but we haven't seen any mention of that with 323 and stuff. Is, 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 is that still intended? Is that back of the drawing board? Is, is, is what, can you tell us anything about sliding? Uh, yeah, so sliding um, won't be in 3.23, but in general, I've seen a lot of, like, you know, cause and concern around, uh, you know, this potentially being very arcadey. And uh, obviously, we don't want that to be the case. It's primarily a thing that is used to get into cover. Uh, for example, in, you know, in, in our game, when we talk about, like, you know, what is a slide, it has a, sti a high stamina cost. Um, you know, you can't fire whilst you're, like, going into the slide. You know, you can't ADS while going into the slide. It's basically a full body commitment action primi primarily designed to be defensive. I've seen some concerns about, uh, you know, initial bursts of speed when you go into the slide and things like that. But obviously, our, our intention is to make this, you know, a slide that, you know, makes sense in the universe of the game. And that is what we are planning to do. And uh, more, no details uh, for 3.23, but obviously as we go on, more will be revealed. Okay. Uh, what's your current stance or opinion on force reactions with regards to how it applies to gunfights? <laughs> so uh, force reactions are always a very contentious point. We tone them down uh, for 3.22. And at the moment, we're looking at removing staggering of all um, weapons, uh, all FPS weapons. So no weapons will no longer call, uh, all weapons will no longer cause the player to stagger. But obviously, you know, we're still keeping flinching and things like that in. Um, and, you know, grenades will still cause knockdowns and things like that, but basically making it more believable and, uh, you know, as you'd, as you'd expect and less frustrating. Because uh, we know staggers are a big pain point uh, for people who do a lot of PvP and FPS. Okay. Uh, I know at least two people will be happy with that. Um, shotguns. How will shotguns be made more relevant with the upcoming changes? I don't want to talk for the uh, again, but it is it is my it is my area. So uh, we are doing a big balance for uh, three twenty three, taking a lot of community feedback as you've been talking about like damage profiles and stuff. Uh, shotguns are going to bring the pain. Uh, the game director is very fond of shotguns, so they will be coming in pretty powerful. Um, so, but obviously, you know, we don't want to make them busted, obviously. So this will include some things like uh, tighter spreads to make them even more accurate distances. I know a lot of people are very annoyed when they shoot somebody at a shotgun who's 20 meters away and they don't do anything. So that is not going to be the case. Um, shotguns haven't been viable for a very long time and we don't want to make that the case. Um, some other improvements as well to pain points that we've seen. Uh, railgun and grenade launcher um, in PvP scenarios um, on the ground will be coming stronger. And the intention of that is so Salty Mike can actually win a gun rush game. Okay. Uh, I got time for maybe two or three more. Uh, what are the major challenges you still need to address in 323 and beyond in order to bring the feel of FPS combat in Star Citizen from that of an alpha to a modern FPS experience? Do you want to take this one, Nick? I think you should all take this one. Yeah, I think yeah. we've kind of already brushed on it, but I will just quickly say, obviously, uh, you know, the, uh, we put so much work in our uh, scopes and obviously we've got such a wide range of armor sets and having what we, like Pascal mentioned, like having the armor sets completely block the vision and then having to do that work around and then making sure that, you know, we've got to especially when you wake a game for PC, you've got to think about different FOVs and you've got to think of different setups and how it will impact different players. And so I think that's something that we've, um, is kind of been a bit of a pain point, but I think the, the change that we're doing now and then eventually down the line, hopefully the change we make later on uh, will really uh, be so beneficial. Um, so that would be my point, I think. Okay. Uh, um, so I can, I yeah, just some. To it. Sorry again, do it. just to add on that, there there are some things. Uh, obviously, uh, the the biggest one for me personally is uh, sprinting and general movement and how that feels. So uh, we're sprinting is uh, a prime example of one of the improvements that we're planning to make. Uh, uh, when you run, the gun goes below the camera. There's not too much head shake and things like that. So the overall feel of when you're sprinting especially if you're on a planet, it doesn't ever feel like you're properly sprinting, sprinting. And again, that ties into, uh, you know, how much stamina that takes because it's it's not too expensive or painful to sprint at the moment. And that plays, in, it plays into how much like weapon sway and things that you have. 
but yeah, some stuff I mentioned earlier, you know, traitors, uh, more, you know, more obvious muzzle flashes, uh, better uh, improvements to how we do medical gameplay, just some other stats on the weapons we need, um, like a sprint to fire is a big one. So at the moment, all the weapons use the same sprint to fire, which is a big reason why the P6LR was a very big offender in 322. And if you basically say, okay, cool, it actually takes you time to shift your LMG from the sprinting pose to the return pose, then LMGs are not as good in CQC and we can make them slap incredibly hard over, you know, those 40 meter ranges because the LMG person is already prepped, already aiming at you, they will shred you. So it's stuff like that that stops us from getting like, you know, because LMGs at the moment feel like assault rifles with big mags where everyone uses LMGs. It's examples of things that we're looking at to say like, hey, you know, this is how we improve our weapon sandbox and overall get something that's, you know, feeling like the weapon variety is very intentional, just like we're doing with armor. And Pascal and Atil, I know, I, I know that these, are, these are the designers and they get to set a lot of direction, but as programmers, there's, yeah. got, there's gotta be some things that, 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 that you want to get in there to, to, to really bring the experience out. What do you got? Honestly, from my side, I have a lot of put a lot of focus in the clunkiness and how the biggest point I always had was like that 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 feels not really smooth firing the weapon. And now that we worked on the recoil, that's the great thing of the procedure recoil, right? I I did the tool, and Zach has to do all the work now, <laughs> bringing in the recoil. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's a a nice benefit of being a programmer. I don't actually have to do the work. I just do a small bit and then Zach suffers. But yeah, this was for me the biggest gripe about our game. Um, the HUD also was always a little bit not too clear to me. We're improving that as well with 323. And for now, like we have all of these new improvements going in and all of my biggest concerns have been answered or addressed. And I don't really know what I want to improve at this point in time obviously when i play more i will start picking up on the more minor annoyances and then want to improve that until they become a major annoyance for me eventually but for now <laughs> i'm uh, i'm way more happier than 3 uh, 323 and don't really have anything that i no. must do it's good how about you atta uh, well, I'm, I'm going to mirror Pascal here. So, um, yeah, f for example, the, the, the combat hut was, was a really good addition, like um, a really good improvement. Now we convey information way more accurately and uh, uh, a lot more useful information to the player. Like um, the difference, like, for example, uh, from time to time, uh, we, uh, we play Star Citizen, like, in the office, and I see the old UI, and, like, in my... In my <laughs> You know, uh, when I'm working on, on this new HUD, like the, the difference is like unimaginable, really. And it's it's going to uh, feel really different. And especially after what uh, the guys were working on with the recoil um, uh, and the new scopes, they, they also made a difference. So probably um, like this particular update um, made a lot of things uh, like closer to, to, the, to, the, to our golden standard. So uh, I will probably uh, get a, a more concrete opinion on, <laughs> on like how awesome uh, we uh, made the things after a, a few more play tests, but it's really, really promising. Cool. All right, last question, because uh, we're already a few minutes over. Um, this is personal, you're speaking only for yourself. You can add one new weapon or gadget that doesn't currently exist in Star Citizen or Squadron 42. What is it? Silence. So, yeah, so it's what, <laughs> what it's a what question. I, yeah. So uh, the big Plus thing the I spot. want is a, 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 sl a slug shotgun, easily. Uh, it's my favorite weapon type in games. I absolutely love them. I also want uh, no, incredibly No, no, just quick... one. Just one. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Slug, slug shotgun? Slug shotgun. That's what I'd take, hands down. All right. Etel? I'm... Um... Probably a rocket launcher from one of the old school shooters. That feels re really good to use. Quake three rocket launcher. A um, chainsaw. <laughs> that would be great. Who said, cha who said chainsaw? Who said chainsaw? Me. Pascal said chainsaw. All right. That's that good. would be great. Nick. Ah uh, man, what a question. Um, 
Uh, I would love some sort of gameplay kind of weapon, maybe shoot a black mini black hole and they all get sucked in the middle and then something happens. I'd love that. Something really out there, sci-fi. Yeah. There, there was a funny thing with Pascal's answer, actually, because he says Chainsaw, that's the most doomed thing. When we were making the procedural recoil, when Pascal was like testing it, he would always hit fire the weapons to say, hey, look how cool this looks because he basically only plays boomer shooters. So <laughs> we, 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 were in a, we were in a feedback loop of like him making recall purely from a hit fire perspective because the, obviously you can't ADS in a lot of boomer shooters. Well, you, you should see his test level. <laughs> it's it's E1 M1 from from the original Doom. No, it's not. It's, it's it's legally distinct. It's legally distinct. No, nah, it's not for the public. But I, I just took the map layout uh, to learn our editor. Right, I have to learn it at one point, and I would, uh, just do E1 M1. I know how that looks. Right. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I asked the question. Uh, I'm a simple baseball Batman myself. I just want. I just want to. I just. I just want to chase people around with a bat. Um, all right, that's it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for another episode of uh, Star Citizen Live based on the FPS improvements coming in Alpha 323. Uh, we are, uh, we're going to do another raid. Uh, Lenny's, you can already start that raid. Looks like we're raiding Vater and Sean Zucken. Uh, they're, a, oh, I know those guys. They're a father and son streamer team. So, yeah, they're pretty cool. Uh, if you stick around, say hi to those folks. Um, uh, uh, just be nice. Wipe your feet. You don't have to. You don't have to stay there, but you can stay here. Um, if you haven't checked it out already, watch the character customizer uh, episode of ISC that came out uh, uh, last week. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff. A lot of people have been waiting for and, uh, and coming away in at 323. And then come back next week for our uh, a cargo and persistent hangar uh, uh, episode of ISC. Um, this week, that's the episode that that Will and Dave and and uh, um, Alex are over there. Uh, trying not to eat their faces to, to get footage to show you uh, because it's still early and it's it needs work. But uh, uh, So appreciate their work uh, and I want to shout them out again. Uh, so yeah, for this show, that was Zach, that was Pascal, that was Atel, and that was Nick. I'm Jared. Thanks a lot for, 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 for showing up. It's David on the keyboards. It's Pete who looks like B-Rabbit in 8 Mile right now. I don't know when that happened. That happened sometime in the middle of the show. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week, everybody. Take care.